right. A very warm welcome to One on One. Definitely that particular time when we get to crunch matters that, uh, you know, touch on different issues around uh, the country and, of course, get to host different personalities that shape the news agenda here in Rwanda, the region, and, of course, internationally. My name, as always, is Eugene Anangwe. My guest in studio today, we're going to him this time, and he's none other than Mr. Faustin Karasira. Welcome to One on One. Thank you. Yes, you are the AG Head of Tourism Department at Rwanda Development Board. And of course, uh, taking over, I believe, from Madame Rika Rigamba. No, it is not uh, from uh, uh, Madame Rika. Mm -hmm. It is just uh, uh, from uh, 1st January mm -hmm. this year, mm -hmm. after the restructuring that uh, has that happened. took place. Yeah. So Rika's position was kind of... Uh, uh, abolished or someone someone else replaced it? No, just, uh, just to make the uh, 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 Tourism and conservation used to be uh, as one department. Mm -hmm. Then later it was now elevated, where now uh, we have the chief tourism officer, who is Ambassador Yamina, and then uh, uh, she is now overseeing two departments, mm -hmm. which one of, uh, of them is the tourism, and then the other one is conservation. Okay. Yeah. So now, let's talk about your department, your docket. And um, there Definitely, you'll be able to give us some answers, of course, concerning the progress that we are doing to ensure that we develop our tourism industry. Sure. And what comes to people's mind, especially when we talk of Rwanda's tourism, is always the gorillas. And so part of the plan of this show today is to try and see how we can diversify the tourism sector. Probably you'll be able to give us some of those answers here. Why do you think that we are mostly just known for gorillas and do you think this is the right thing or what, have, what are you doing to make sure that there is also a difference in some of the things that we're synonymous with when it comes to tourism? Uh, you see, uh, tourism is not different with uh, uh, other markets. And for any kind of the business, you always establish a flagship. <laughs> And then once you have a, a flagship, it, it becomes very easy now to leverage from that uh, kind of uh, uh, a flagship. Uh, you can even refer to other de destinations. When uh, someone is talking about Paris, what is it coming uh, you know, in your mind? When you're talking about New York, what is coming in your mind? The same you know, for Singapore and, uh, and other places. Now, when today you're talking about safari, what comes in mind? Specifically, it is just the region, and you just find it is either Kenya or Tanzania that you know is coming in, in mind. Mm -hmm. Now, what the country has uh, tried to do up within this uh, past 20 years was really to uh, to to do a kind of uh, a, an aggressive campaign mm -hmm. to position Rwanda first of all as the host of the of the mountain gorilla uh, experience, mm -hmm. but not only as the experience. It was more highlighting what was has been achieved in terms of conservation, given that the mountain gorilla have been on the uh, list of endangered uh, species yes, yes, yes. for many years mm. but at least with all efforts in terms of conservation mm. we have now initiated the gorilla naming ceremony mm -hmm. which since then you know every year since 2005 every year we are naming either 12 or 20 baby gorillas you say you said this is sort of a pillar or a start of point or uh, you know uh, in your own words you've said that you're using or every country always has to have something that is synonymous with and, and, and for Rwanda it's it's the gorillas. But are we then under a threat of or could we say that we sort of stuck there on the gorillas and forgot or are taking too long to jump onto other areas of tourism attraction? No, uh, I would say oh, we have started already. You know, uh, we have started the uh, diversification program for uh, for, the, for the last, uh, I would say, four years. It has been more the kind of, uh, you know, the approach uh, for the government. Because if you may, uh, as you may recall, uh, in 2010, if I'm not mistaken, we have launched the, the first ever canopy walkway within, you know, the region. What happened to it? We don't hear much about it anymore. Uh, really? Yes. Try just to see now the trend, you know, uh, 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 of 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 uh, of tour tourism in Nyungwe, mm -hmm. last uh, last year only we just registered 32 percent increase, mm -hmm. where we shifted from 6,900 tourists to 9,000, mm -hmm. which which is really you know for the first time uh, for Nyungwe mm -hmm. ha having you know such kind of an experience. So it is already you know showing that impact. And the second thing that we have uh, also to recognize it is not because today you launch this project mm -hmm. or this you know uh, uh, program that's you know tomorrow you'll you'll just see uh, the, the 
huge impact. But there is already the trend is really very prom uh, promising mm -hmm. because we are experiencing not less than 20% increase in average, in average on annual basis. But the challenge then here is that people might start saying then, aren't we then proud of these progresses we are making? Because we seem not to be telling these stories more often than required. You know, we, we, we don't hear or see more of this kind of information out there talking of this success story of the growth of the tourism sector. And that is why we started with that first, first question. When we talk around this tourism, the first thing that comes to people's mind is always the gorillas. This is the story that we probably best said or told. Why are we not making that bigger initiative of talking more about the other tourism attraction sites that we have come up with? I would say, again, we have started as well. Mm -hmm. Because when you look at, uh, uh, let's say, uh, the uh, 2013, 2012, 13, 14, you can even see how among the top travel uh, uh, media yes. have been, you know, rank, uh, ranking Nyungwe and even other places among the top destination to visit, you know, uh, uh, for the year. Uh, I think it is uh, even the last week where uh, the canopy walkway was highlighted among you know the ten uh, 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 the ten uh, items or the ten destinations to visit for honeymoon you know for for lovers. So what does it mean? By the way, even by uh, being hosted by yourself here, it is already again a part of uh, you know that uh, 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 that uh, uh, that campaign. So on this, yes, we still have uh, a long way to do uh, in terms of promoting other you know uh, uh, products and position them. To the, to the uh, level of uh, mountain gorillas, but uh, there is a wider kind of a, a campaign where uh, uh, the government we have started with uh, uh, having the marketing representations mm -hmm. in specific markets, mm -hmm. and with this already, we, we, we are really very confident that uh, in few uh, few uh, very really limited time we'll be also hearing Rwanda being talked about in mice, you know, mm -hmm. being talked about uh, 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 way be to uh, talked about religious be talked about you know other uh, other kind of uh, you know uh, attractions mm. so on this again as i've said uh, even for the mountain gorillas it, it it was not you know an investment for one year yeah it took time it took time then, so we are really confident that even for the rest yes. uh, especially these new initiatives new products that are being launched every year they will be uh, you know also uh, uh, elevated to the so, so you accept that um, a lot still needs to be done and as you accept or as you take this responsibility of saying that yes indeed a lot still needs to be done to reach or to get other tourist attraction destinations to the level of what we are known for in terms of the mountain gorillas so could you probably point out to us what are those things that are making us not be able to have reached that level of the gorillas? Is it a question of time? Is it a question of resources? Is it a question of a lack of those other places? What is the issue here? Uh, uh, I would say it is it is it is a bit uh, uh, it is a bit complex because first of all there is a market. And when you are penetrating a market, you not just present yourself to the market today, yes. and when you start the campaign, mm. uh, and uh, then expect the high high kind of uh, turnover, you know, tomorrow or, or, or after tomorrow. Looking at the nature of tourism, by the way, uh, because if today I start promoting Nyungwe, that means I, I should expect in two years to come. Because it is the time where people now start selling packages. Mm -hmm. So that is one. The second, it is again that kind of uh, 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 integrating or inclusive. How do we work more with the media? Because this is this at this this the end is part of all of us. Yes. By the way, for the marketing of a destination, it is not only the tourism board's responsibility. Mm. It is also how to, to bring on board other stakeholders, especially the media media uh, uh, tour operators airlines and so forth but uh, again on this which is even by the way a win-win because at the end it gives you also a business from the media perspective mm -hmm. not only uh, uh, through the uh, advertisement but also through you know by getting more uh, accurate news and uh, 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 I would say accurate articles you know when you say win-win situation yeah. it's, it's good also to be practical and maybe look at the, reali the re realistic part of it 
So, in other words, when you say it's important to bring on board other stakeholders in this issue, then what specific role do you want the media to play in this particular situation? And what has been the role of your department or RDB um, in terms of putting or bringing on board this win-win situation? Probably you'll be able to identify w with us what sort of partnerships have you been able to do so far to work with these other stakeholders that you're calling for to join you hands in promoting tourism in the country. Where are we at? What have we been able to do? Uh, on this, I'll, uh, I'll just give, uh, I will highlight two or three uh, initiatives that, that, that we, are, we have been doing. Mm -hmm. uh, there is familiarization trips that we have been facilitating, where we, we, we just invite uh, uh, different media, either you know uh, local, regional, and even international. And then once they are here, we just facilitate them to, 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 to to the access of all uh, tourism attractions. And uh, we also, you know, do uh, facilitate in terms of, uh, you know, logistics. Mm -hmm. The second, it is now through advertisement and uh, uh, having also the uh, marketing representations in key uh, markets. Now, with, again, those because at the end they, they even penetrate easily they are they are present you know in the market they act in different ways you know uh, uh, in those markets so th 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 you know that is the kind of uh, the second one now the third uh, uh, component is more uh, having like tourism ambassadors where you, what you have experienced share with others I really much appreciate uh, uh, the tweet you sent mm -hmm. and the feedback that you know I saw mm -hmm. already you know from many people, mm -hmm. which is really again very very positive. Because at the end, if you experience and then you don't you don't share, then that that means you know uh, you, you don't achieve yeah. much. But again, coming back on that, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, will, uh, I will even come back now to you and say, why don't we also be experiencing where uh, like some tourism shows, you know? on our local media, what, what, what is really not affecting to have more interest into uh, tourism, into conservation? Because once there are also such kind of, you know, uh, 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 initiatives, I would say we are really again there as RDB to, to joint venture or to partner with with you on how to making it happen. And at the end, by the way, it will, it will bring more add, uh, it will add more value not only to your business as uh, you know as the media but yes. also even you know to the to the mm -hmm. uh, to the whole kind of uh, uh, economic cycle so, so I, I think it is still again to look at it yes. in that win win you win -win know uh, pers perspective so, so are we able today to touch a finger and say this is the amount of investment that the tourism department through rdb has been able to uh, put through the media for example as a partner to spearhead the growth of the tourism industry. Are you able to, to tell us today that this is what we have been able to invest so far in terms of figures, uh, probably uh, in whichever way? Is there anything that you can tell us today here that this is the amount of investment that you've put to push from your end the awareness creation for people to understand that we have more than just the gorillas to come and see Rwanda? I would say uh, the most most important the budget yes is there, but the most most important it is uh, uh, you know what, what is happening that impact, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, unfortunately I didn't you know compile uh, the kind of uh, that specific publicity and uh, PR uh, uh, budget, but it is again something that that you know uh, uh, can be shared. But what what we have been highlighting when we are hosting the farm trip. Let's say we are taking you with your team to Nyungwe mm -hmm. or to volcanoes or uh, to Akagera yes. or you know to Kibuye and so forth. Mm -hmm. In terms of money, it means a lot because when you look at the whole kind of logistics, there is already you know uh, that cost. When we, when we are uh, working with the, uh, the private sector, the tourism chamber especially, uh, to attend specific trade fairs. Mm -hmm either you know at the regional level and even you know at the international level it means a lot again because at the end there is that kind of you know a budget that is being you know uh, 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 spent on that but also do you think that uh, you can be the number one foreign exchange earner of the economy without investing mm -hmm. i don't think so mm -hmm. because at the end it, by looking at uh, 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 only uh, last year by uh, June, uh, by July 2013 to June uh, 2014, if the tourism managed to generate 297 million US dollars to the economy, 
what does it mean? That is what, you know, was uh, generated as revenues. Mm -hmm. Of course, if the destination was not well known or being well, you know, posi uh, position positioning itself, then we couldn't, you know, uh, reach uh, that level of revenues. You see, for me, the issue here again, maybe if we look at it from the other flip side of the coin and probably brag and say, yes, the number one foreign exchange, Anna, we've seen or heard of this phrase not just in Rwanda, other countries also brag of having tourism as their foreign exchange Anna. Could we take all the credit and say that it's because of the investment you've put or is it just automatic that foreigners want to have a good time and whenever they feel of feel they want to do that they'll always want to visit some of these countries. So do you take the credit because of the investment or because of could it be because of just naturally foreigners want to go and have a good time? Let me tell you. I would say we we, we deserve that credit mm -hmm. for one reason. Can you go where, where you don't know? Mm -hmm. How can you even plan to go to a place which you don't know? Adventure. You just want to go have an adventure. Uh, trust me, mm -hmm. we have been targeting the high end. Mm -hmm. That is the Rwanda's uh, uh, strategy. And f specifically for the high end, they never just go for, you know, for, for such kind of... They know, know what they want to come and see. Exactly. They come specifically for it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That is one. The second, when you look at the whole kind of uh, uh, approach, because at the end, as I've said, there is even you know, what is beyond uh, 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 the, the direct marketing. Mm -hmm. When Rwanda Day are happening here and there, when our president is visiting, you know, any any of the place and talking about Rwanda, that is already, you know, a, a huge investment. By the way, let's uh, remind ourselves: mm -hmm. in 2000, just going on Google, mm -hmm. putting Rwanda, or 1995, six, seven, eight, what was coming first? Tell me. It was the Tutsi genocide. Mm -hmm. That was the uh, the news. Mm -hmm. It was more the darkness. Yeah. But today, now put. Rwanda on, uh, on on Google, you will see. Already, you will just find even the tourism among the top, um, the, the top three. You know, uh, pictures that come uh, exactly. Right. So, what does that mean? Mm. Of course, it, it was also leveraging from the wider investment, that, you know, that the country has been putting, you know, in place. Mm -hmm. But indeed, there is really a lot because I remember since two thousand three when you know the, the the kind of the aggressive campaign has started. Uh, uh, in UK, where you know our, our Prime Minister went there just to launch, you know Rwanda, you know uh, at that kind of a platform. When uh, uh, the uh, domestic tourism was launched, and the chief guest of honor was uh, uh, the president, uh, the president himself. Mm -hmm. When you know we launched the Quitizina, having you know the uh, the whole support from uh, the top uh, 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 government leaders. What does that mean? So I, I will really say, the credit. Rwanda deserve that credit because there is really that huge investment, not only in terms of money, but in terms of uh, uh, energy, in terms of being there, in terms of pushing for, in terms of providing all technical supports that mm -hmm. you know uh, uh, have been uh, given. Of course, we cannot avoid as well to appreciate the uh, uh, the willingness of you know tourists that have uh, 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 you know uh, choosing Rwanda for all these twenty years, mm. and even you know the friend of, uh, the friends of Rwanda that have been coming and also keep advocating and say and, hey, and bringing them visit friends. Rwanda, you know, yes. before you die. Yes. Yeah. Then there is the aspect of the elements that constitute a good time when you go to visit a tourist attraction site or when you visit a country like Rwanda and you want to have a good time. You know, the, the, the different elements. Number one, there is security, of course. Uh, number two, yes, you want to see specific things, as you said, the high-end people who just know what they want to come and see. But um, there have been a lot of complaints, mostly also from locals, who feel that uh, their contribution would be through calling for investment in the entertainment sector. Because when a tourist comes, or even when the country is doing, uh, you know, uh, this, big conferences here where we have various people come from different places to come to the country. That also is part of tourism. But then but they feel like the country is too boring to even stay in. If their meeting is going on through the weekend and continuing on, on Monday, they would rather go to Burundi or Uganda or a nearest country where they'll have fun and then come back for the meeting.
So do you feel that in this area of entertainment, we have sort of forgotten its importance in complementing the strides that we're making in, in the tourism sector? I would say that uh, the entertainment industry was not forgotten. How can you explain that? Again, again, let's remind ourselves mm -hmm. where we are coming from. Mm -hmm. Yeah? How many nightclubs did we have in 2000? Mm -hmm. And how many do we have now today? Five years down the line. Yes. Remember, we used to be there with, did we really have, you know, a cinema place mm -hmm. where, you know, you could go and watch a movie. Are we, are we, are you trying to say that we are happy with what no, we no, have today? No, 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 That we have no, fine, no, 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 five no, years. No, 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 I'm not. It's such a short no, time no, no, for no, no. us to have what no, we have no, today. I'm not saying that, you know, we have reached the maximum. Yes. No. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to, to, to reflect how we are, uh, though we still have a long way to go, but we are all, also on the right track. Because at the end, with all this doing business uh, uh, environment that has been, you know, uh, facilitating or easy, easy, easing, you know, many uh, uh, items to do, especially when you want to start businesses, mm. it has been really contributing a lot by seeing many businesses opening. But the problem and on, is, and, and, uh, and on this, yeah. I would say again. Mm. It is where, uh, as I've said, the destination is not made by the public only. It is always made by that joint venture of public and the private sector. But then the, the, the people in the entertainment industry mm. felt left out. If you're saying that you attach importance mm. also in the entertainment industry mm. towards contributing also to the elements that are needed to give this tourist a, a, a nice experience when they come, you know, this noise pollution issue, your department, the tourism department, was so silent until the last days when this thing was being dealt with or spoken about by the president himself. Why was this? I would say we were not silent, as, as you, can, uh, uh, you can think. I think you're working behind the curtains. <laughs> you see, uh, first of all, inter there is two things that we, uh, I think we need to dissociate. Mm -hmm. Entertainment and noise pollution. Mm -hmm. By the way, when you look at noise pollution policies mm -hmm. in other countries, Simple example, UK, it is even very heavy than what was proposed here. Mm -hmm. Because at the end, we, once we are targeting the high end, once we are targeting the right market, mm -hmm. we also need to, to, to provide to them a service which matches you know, their standard. That is one. The second, what was uh, uh, raised for the noise pollution, it is not to say close your business. It was rather saying, please, adhere to standards so that you can even do much better your business. Now, what was there and what even uh, uh, we really we are grateful to, uh, to our president because he, he, you know, he, he gave uh, the guidance and even you know, the best way to do. But uh, uh, again, as RDB, we have been also having meetings with the tourism chamber and even the concerned institutions to look at how can we still reach both. Mm -hmm without killing the business, but without also affecting the citizens. Because at the end, if citizens are being, you know, uh, are victims yes. of the business, yeah. trust me, they will become the, now the threats mm -hmm. of that business. Yet, for us, we are also looking for, uh, at for them business, yes. as clients. Mm -hmm. So that was the kind of, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the approach that was, uh, uh, was used through that, uh, you know, public-private uh, dialogue, and it resulted. Yeah? But again, in whatever we are doing, it, once we want to sustain the tourism business and even other business, we need to differentiate ourselves. Look at the value of Mountain Gorilla today. For other business, once they are not also to that level of standard, then people will feel an imbalance between you know, what they have experienced and what they expect and what now they are expecting mm. so that's why we always call for more partnership with you know uh, the private sector and even you know other uh, stakeholders to keep our standards and keep positioning ourselves saying rwanda yes once you go yes we'll really feel that you know value of money you will get more than what you know you would expect, you, expect and so forth so so as we as we probably move towards the end of the program do you think that you know, that when you say it's the number one foreign exchange, Anna, do you really think that one day, one time here in Rwanda, we'll have a scenario where the local 
tourism, domestic tourism, the revenues that are raised from domestic tourism, if any, would one day, one time surpass the revenues that we raise via the foreign tourists? Okay, uh, that is, uh, a, a, I would say, a tough question. Mm. Uh, because uh, as of uh, today, we don't know really uh, a best scenario where you know it has happened all over the world, where you can see the domestic you know uh, uh, tourism surpassing the uh, uh, the you know the leisure, leisure tourism in, in general. Mm. But uh, uh, what what matters more is first that passion and embracing that culture mm. of tourism mm. by the domestic market because once we reach once we reach that level mm. there 